and the day just keeps going. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and today is October 1st. It is Tuesday. Now, folks, I am revved up, and I am not going to blame the 12 cups of coffee I had. And I'm not lying. I have had 12 cups of coffee. I'm going to blame Penny Boys again. I have been over there day trading, folks, nonstop. I'm not kidding. From 9.30 to 4 o'clock, I've been trading with all sorts of people. We've been having fun. This was a very volatile day. A lot of people didn't like it. I did. I love bounces. We had a lot of serious rips and we had a lot of big dips. You really shouldn't panic when you see a dip. You don't know how far it's going to go. Maybe it's going to bounce. Watch it. It could be a great buying opportunity. A great example is one we were playing today, which we've been playing for a while. You may want to look at it. It too is a hot penny stock. Ticker D-U-O. Duo. We were trading Duo today, and out of the clear blue, she took this big drop. I mean, a big fall didn't make sense at all. And we were all panicking. So first thing I did was go see if there was any new information out there. And there was. A news press just came out. They had announced a public offering. Ah, no wonder it fell. You're diluting our shares. You're taking away our shareholder value. So we expect a dip. But how far it goes all depends on how many shares they're putting on the market compared to how many shares they have in the OS. So I dove in. You ready for these numbers? They are putting 1.6 million shares on the market. That is a very small public offering, but they've got 33 billion in the outstanding share count. Folks, 1.6 million is of nil effect to 33 billion shares. So I came back to the Penny Boys group and I told them that. I said, this is silly. This is dumb. There's no reason for it to have come this far. Folks, I think this is going to bounce right back to where it was. It sure did. What a money-making opportunity. She bounced right back to the 200, got over the 200, and the last I looked, she was still climbing. God, I love hot penny stocks, and I love sharing them with you, and I've got one for you right now. This is me. No, not me. Ticker, M-E, me. This is 23andMe Holdings. Can you guess what this company does by looking at that name? I couldn't. I was way off. I guess they were into clothing. Now, I found me by looking at the charts, which is where I find predominantly most of my hot penny stocks because I spend a lot of time looking at charts. Plus, I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time, and at a glance, I can tell if there's heat. I'm looking for a bullish pattern, you know, a cup and handle, an atypical breakout, a double bottom. Any one of those tells me this thing's about ready to run. Well, when I find a hot chart, first thing I do is look up in the corner to see what ticker it is because I don't even know what company I'm looking at. I'm just looking at charts. So now that I've got the ticker, I run over and I go through the filings and a press release looking for a catalyst. If I can find some hot news any time in the last 30 days that still has substance, that's enough to get a hot chart moving. And we've got a hot chart with ME. It is an atypical breakout. One of my favorite breakouts. Now, she has already started to break out. She's over that 200 starting to climb right now. And I would have liked to have caught this earlier. But we have a very unique catalyst with this company. And it is very well defined. We've only got a couple days to consider here. So let me paint you a picture. Me. She finished the day at about 37 cents, and she was up a little over 6%. Now, this is a hot penny stock in the major exchange, coming with a bunch of benefits that you don't get with the OTC. First off, all of your transactions are free. You can trade it pre-market, after-market. There's a lot more volume, a lot more money on the major exchange, and a lot more oversight. A lot more people are watching these companies, keeping them honest, and that keeps our investments safe. So, did you guess what this California company does? Let me show you. They are involved with genetic testing. DNA test kits, if you will. You get a drop of blood, send it to them, they get your DNA, and they get all this information that they have got, and they put together different products for you. Maybe you want to know about your ancestry, or about your health. Health and ancestry. They've also got both of those together with a subscription. They've got a subscription here where they keep in touch with you with more updated information. 
You have a biannual blood testing that's going to be done each year for you. You are part of a genetics informed clinical care. You also get 190 personalized genotyping reports with new reports and features being delivered throughout the year about all sorts of things, health action plans, pharmacogenics, cancer reports. Now, this is great. I mean, this really does give you a lot of personal information. No generalities here. This is as specific as you get, and it's about you. The problem is there's a lot of people I believe can't handle that much information. They get their DNA report back and it says that they had to sell for Hodgkin's disease or cancer. doesn't mean you're going to get it. It just means there's a possibility. Well, these people could easily go over the top. They could just, you know, ruin their lives worrying about it. And now that they know, they can't forget. A fact is a fact. I mean, I know people that when they get sick, first thing they do is run to Google, put in their symptoms to see what they got. And they always come back telling me some rare, horrible disease. And it's like, I assure you, that's probably not what you got. Let's just wait and see. Now, the other thing that concerns me about this product, it's a great product. You get all your information online, easy access, lots of information detailed about you up there in the cloud, nice and secure. Is it? I mean, is anybody completely safe online? Aren't huge companies getting hacked all the time and not just for money or for crypto, but for information. This is very important information. What if they got hacked and your information got out and the insurance company saw that you had a Hodgkin's disease or a cancer disease cell? They'll never give you health insurance and that gets out. Nobody will ever cover you. So I am a little concerned about this sort of information being out there. So what else can I tell you about this company? Well, continuing on with this picture I am painting, we've got a ton of news here and most of it we're not going to read because it's all the same thing and it really isn't news. It is a lawsuit about our catalyst. Me investor notice, current 23andMe holding shareholders are notified to contact BFA Law about an investigation into the board of directors. And I'm going to explain more as we go along. All of these pieces of news are that being repeated over and over and over again. We have two pieces of news. This one here that came out on the 25th of September, 23andMe launches new genetic report on likelihood of frequent emotional eating. Great. They've got some more information, enlighten their customers. But this is what it's all about down here, folks. This is why we have all these notices here to shareholders. This came out September 17th. Independent directors of 23andMe resigned from the board. Let's take a look at why. The independent directors of the board of 23andMe today sent the following letter to the chief executive officer, Ann Wochachiki, <laughs> co-founder and chairman of the board of directors, in which the independent directors have provided their resignation from the board effective immediately. This was on the 17th. Dear Ann, we, the independent directors of 23andMe board, hereby tender our resignations effective immediately. After months of work, we have yet to receive from you a fully financed, fully diligenced, actionable proposal that is in the best interest of the non-affiliated shareholders. We believe the special committee and the board have provided ample time for you to submit such a proposal. That we have not seen any notable progress over the last five months leads us to believe no such proposal is forthcoming. They continue by saying we wholeheartedly support the company's mission and we believe deeply in the value of the personalized health and wellness offering that you have articulated. It is also clear that we differ on strategic direction for the company going forward. So because of that difference and because of your concentrated voting power, we believe that it is in the best interest of the company shareholders that we resign from the board rather than have protracted and distracting differences of view with you on the direction of the company. So they don't want to argue. They don't want to cause any troubles. They're going to leave quietly. We are proud of what 23andMe has achieved in pioneering direct access to genetic information. And we have been honored to have had the opportunity to be a part of these efforts. Sounds to me like they're leaving begrudgingly. 
Now let's continue painting this picture. One of the filings that just came out here recently is a notice from the NASDAQ. On September 18th, one day after that news press, 23andMe Holdings received a deficiency letter from the NASDAQ that the company is not in compliance with the NASDAQ listing rule. As a result of the director resignations disclosed in the current report on the Form 8K filed on September 18th. So they filed the report on September 18th and immediately NASDAQ was on their butt. This isn't like being underneath a dollar for too long, which this company is. They are under a dollar. I don't know exactly how long. I actually didn't look, but they're at 36 cents. What I did look for was at their filings. I went all the way back to the end of July, going through every 8K, seeing if the NASDAQ had contacted them about a minimum bid price requirement, and they had a deadline. I haven't seen one. I'm not saying one couldn't be there before July 31st, but back that far, I didn't see one. But they've got this one, which is a lot more serious. The minimum bid deficiency gives them six months before they have to worry about being kicked off the, off the major exchange down to the OTC. This one, there is no deadline. You get it fixed or get out of here. So they have been given a deadline here, folks. Right there, the company has until October 3rd, 2024 to submit a plan to regain compliance. They've got two days to get this plan in. If they don't get this plan in, they'll just get kicked down to the OTC. That is one foot in the grave, folks. Do you see where our catalyst is coming from? We're saving our assets here. We don't want the company to go down there. So we need them to get this in, in a hurry. So any filing, any news press that says they've done it, anything that NASDAQ brings out saying we've accepted your plan, any of that is great because that's going to give them a deadline and it'll be a while. And I'm sure the company has plans of getting new directors. It just happens so bloody quick, right? Now, the other thing they said that the CEO Ann had a concentrated amount of voting shares. Well, she does. That was back September 17th. On September 30th, she bought more shares. They tell us here, she now has a total of 24%, let me make that bigger, 24.8% of all Class A common stock, about one-fourth of it, and she has 60% of all the Class B. Now, here's the problem, folks. We don't have a plan for man. She hasn't told us what she's going to do with this company. That's why the directors left. But that's not a problem for us. We're day traders. We're not worried what's going to happen a month, three months, six months down the road. We're looking at this play for the next three days. Now, if she happens to come out with a plan and puts it out there for all of us to read, all the better. Great. But ours is wanting this plan of recompliance, getting into NASDAQ on time and NASDAQ approving it. That's what we're looking at. So what was the relative volume around this company today? It was up about one third. She's been doing an average over the last 30 days of 2.7 million shares a day, 2.8. Today, she jumped to about 3.6. Share structure for me. Yeah, nothing to complain about, nothing to brag about. We got about 340 million shares. Um, insiders. The only one I know is Anne. She owns 25%. We know that much. So we can take 25% off of this, which is going to be something like 80 shares, 80 million shares. So that's going to take it down to like, what, 260 million. And then you got to deduct the, the rest of the insider shares. So anywhere from 260 million down is going to be our float. I don't know how far down, but it could be considerable. Market cap for the company, we're at about 118 million. Take a look at the financials. They are making money. Um, they were climbing for three years in a row. Remember, we got to put three zeros behind any of these numbers. So we're talking about millions of dollars here. We were at 243 million in 2021. We added 30 million to that for 2022. Another 25 million to bring it up to 300 million at the end of 2023. And at the end of their fiscal year, uh, March of 2024, they had lost 70 million, falling down to 219 million. And of course, as you would expect, their profits fell as well. 
but they are making revenues. They are making profit. Take a look at their quarterly. Hmm, got a pattern here. Year ago, we were at 60 million for three months. Down to 50, down to 40, back up to 60, back down to 40. And we are still bringing in profit. You know, all I can think is people probably right now in the midst of inflation, they're more concerned about buying baby food and gas and toilet paper instead of a DNA kit. Just a thought. What is their balance sheet? Let's not forget to bring those three zeros over here too. Cash and cash equivalents. Think of it as the bank. We got about $172 million. Total assets is at $368 total liabilities at 224 so we do have positive stockholder equity here of 143 million we have good strong revenues i mean they're not growing but they're strong and we've got good profits that's great for a day trader we're looking good fundamentally looking at our disclosures all right i've already shared the sc13d and's new purchase this 8K was NASDAQ informing them that they're out of compliance because of the resignations from their directors. These other SC13Ds are the same thing. You see that A at the end? That means they've been amended. They changed something on it. I don't know what. Then we got a bunch of Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock. And we're mostly interested when they buy them or sell them. Those are good token si signals for us. Well, there are no buys or sells. They're moving shares around for different reasons. And then I went through these eight Ks, looking for that NASDAQ notification that they were under the minimum bid price requirement. Didn't find it at this point. You may want to go check further back. So that's what we got, folks. We have directors resigning abruptly because Ann hasn't got a plan for the company. NASDAQ telling the company, you've got to have directors, you can't have this empty, and they have to submit a plan in two days. So I'm thinking between now and October 4th, we should see something happen. And with the chart set up the way it is right now, it could rip. Let's go take a look at that chart. We're going to chart 23andMe on my free trading platform, as usual. I got me, ticker ME, opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. As you can see, it has been a sad year for the company. She has been in a downtrend the entire year and never once even got close to that 200-day MA. It was about eight months ago we hit that 52-week high of $1.02. And maybe 10 days ago we hit our 52-week low of $0.29. Cents. And right now we're at $0.37. Cents. Let's drop on down to that six-month, four-hour view. So about six months ago, we had a high of 83 cents and she has been in a downtrend over the last six months. But this is a stock that's eager to break out when it has opportunity. We had two times that our 200 day MA went flat right here and right there. And the stock made use of both of them. Each time it broke out over them, giving us just about 50% gains. Now, once the 200 day started to fall here again, she broke down underneath it and she started to fall with it. Now, right here is where the game begins, folks. We've got our 200 MA coming down. We've got our 200 haul coming up. Both are exactly the same strength. They're very, very strong. And our price is stuck here in the middle. Right here, we just had a huge bounce from 29 cents all the way up to 38 cents. But more to the point, to the 200 all the way to the 200 and actually through it. And you're going to see on the next chart, this came because the 200 haul just changed her trend. As soon as the trend changed, boom, she pushed that price right up like that. She came back down in a great position. She's now on top of the 50, floating on that nine, all the way up to the 200. And look what we see here. Look at all of these wicks pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, going through the 200 over and over and over again. Then she finally breaks out and then breaks down. Don't tell me she's ready to fall. I don't think so. All these wicks pointed up, going through the 200, actually getting through the 200. I think she wants to climb. So what is this about? A crouch and a pounce. You want to go higher? You got to bend your knees to jump. A cat goes down just a couple inches to go up lots of feet. That's what we had here. Look at that nine-day MA. 
came down and it did not curve around. It ricocheted, blink, right up immediately for two days. And after market pre-market periods, it has been floating on that nine day climbing across every single MA looking very, very strong. And look at all these MAs right there. Every single one of them turned up climbing about ready to cross the bigger 200 day MA, which is going to give more power to the price climbing. They call these crossovers golden crosses. Oscillators. Well, my PPO is climbing strong. We had a crossover pre-market. MACD is climbing. Lots of big green bars on the board. And our RSI is clear up at 64. Though it's a bit planted right now. She's flat, but things look good. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. All right. So here we are underneath the 200, the 200 went flat here and look right there, folks, our 200 haul just changed trend from purple to blue, right? And when did this jump happen? As soon as it went blue happens all the time. I'm not going to say all the time, but lots and lots and lots of times, folks, this happens often. So this is the one that pushed that to and through the 200 on the four hour chart all the way up, back down, landed on our 200 sweet positioning, took a climb, took a dip, another bounce right back to where we're at. There's our crouch and our pounce. And again, all of our MAs are crossing that 200 climbing right now. It is really looking solid. Volume isn't particularly stronger than usual, but it's steady. That's good. Oscillators, PPO, percentage price oscillators climbing. MACD is actually trying to bounce right now. And our RSI is clear up there at 70. Looking sweet. Let's take a look at our five day, 15 minute. So we're on top of the 200 here. There's our crouch down to the 29. Through the aftermarket, pre-market, she didn't do anything. And as soon as the bell came on, we took another dip and a rip right through the 200. And she's been climbing ever since. 200 day MA is climbing. All of our other MAs are climbing. Oscillators are a bit cool here. But we know what our catalyst is. We're looking for this plan of compliance to be given to the NASDAQ before October 3rd. We're looking for NASDAQ to accept it probably by October 4th, I would think. This is our catalyst. Now, if Ann comes out with a letter and a plan for the company, great. But we are waiting for that. Now, the stock is in a breakout mode right now. She is going through that 200 climbing, so I expect some climb. But we get that catalyst that we're looking for. This thing could run hard. So you can do some more research. I'm going to suggest that you do. There's always more to know, but that's really what we're looking for. But your research isn't going to hurt. You may even learn something I didn't share with you that I probably should have. Never can tell unless you leave me a comment. Do that. Leave me comments down below. I do answer folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.